Old Bones Blues. One, two, one, two, three, four. classic style blues. Main thing here from the point of view of tone is you remember to keep it basically clean but just breaking up, especially when you dig in a little bit. Take seriously their observation in the, uh, in the walkthrough about tone that you can affect the amount of overdrive coming out of your amp by using the volume on your instrument. They suggest keeping it at 7 for most of the track and then bringing it up um, to 10 for the solo and then obviously um, take it back down again when you go back into the more composed part of the track. Plenty of um, detail in the view of stopping sounds we've made and because we're in the key of E there's quite a lot of open strings so a lot of the times you might want to either use your left hand to damp or maybe drop your right hand on but um, basically right in the first bar um, you've got a quaver rest, an eighth note rest. That's the little thing that looks a bit like a seven that's been punched on the nose, in case you're wondering. You've also got crotchet rests. Um, and basically I have to keep um, reminding folks that that's just the kind of detail that examiners are looking out for. So if you happen to be looking more at the tablature than the notation, I would just take a pencil and write all of those rests in to the tablature sort of more or less on a long uh, on a on a line with the tab numbers and, and right at the beginning even just as you're first learning the tune um, so that that thing of stopping notes gets built in right at the beginning one of the things you tend to find is people kind of sort of half learn things maybe just to decide whether they want to uh, to, to really do it for an exam um, and then all sorts of lazy features sort of get left in the performance and one thing I always like to remind people is that you may do something right at the beginning of learning a tune um, which may or may not be the most ideal thing but that will tend to come out when you're under pressure and you'll be under pressure in the exam so when you're learning something try to learn it with as much of the actual detail that's going to be required as possible because in the end when you're actually put on the spot you're more likely to do things um, the right way around, as it were. Um, in bar 10, um, when, I, when I was playing it I wanted to play it more or less straight as written, but bear in mind that you, as the uh, interpreter in the exam, you can make things your own way so long as they work. Um, so when you have bar 10 which goes you could also do that last note on the 4th string 3rd fret, um, fourth string fifth fret, just, just to bend it up just a little bit. Um, two bars later you have that third fret note here that bends up 
it's the same kind of thing, it's the same note in an octave different. Notice that it's got a little bend sign and a quarter over it. That's just to remind us that it's only part of the way between the two frets. So we don't want to get to this pitch. You're not going, you're not going all, all, all that way. Sometimes known as a blues curl or just a curl or quarter note bend. For the solo, as we've said, do um, bring your volume up if you've got the time. Um, bear in mind, with a solo, you don't have to start playing right at the very, 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 very beginning of it. You could have a couple of beats to compose yourself, uh, to roll your volume up, if that's how it wants to be. Um, and notice that what you do at the end of the first uh, line on the second page, there's, there's, there's basically those three notes and then the next line. That's effectively a composed outro for the solo. So don't drop your tone for that bit, you will drop it for the beginning of letter D, which is where the sort of, as, as, as it were, the, the verse um, part of the song comes back in as distinct from the solo. So all of this, um, that's still you know, the composed solo. And it's worth just pointing out that very often in solos there are um, fixed elements which are retained, that might be an intro or an outro in this case, and then there's a, a, a middle section which is, which is literally just completely up to you, and that's an instance of this. Um, and then right at the end, a little suggestion, three bars from the end when we get these chords. I like to suggest just to illustrate that you can, rather than strumming them, um, try picking them. Hybrid picking, you might use the pick to play the lower note, and your middle and ring fingers to play the upper two. And I'll probably strum these. So there we go. There is Old Bones Blues. <laughs>